<clears throat> Hi, everybody. Rick D. Clemente with you and Astrology Unplugged. Welcome to the show. It's nice to have you on show number 380. I was looking that up today, and I'll have to think of a special guest for 400. So I got 20 weeks to think of that. Tonight is something that I've been uh, itching towards, and I'm not sure really how to pull it off, but, you know, this show seems to pull itself off. Uh, I've been having so many people, and myself included, rubbing their chins about what's going on with the planets. And I've been experiencing, after a lot of years, that things are very, very intense. And I do not want to attribute it all to Pluto. And almost everybody I talk to is doing such. And I just don't believe it. And I'm not trying to be difficult. I just don't believe it is all Pluto. I happen to believe it's Pluto plus Eris together. We're going to talk about some of that tonight. But we'll see because I certainly don't know the answer. But I definitely am seeing all around the internet. Uh, lots of people are trying to write off what's going on as merely Pluto. And I just don't buy it. Now... What I'm going to do is rewind tonight and go back. Uh, Liza and I have been talking. Um, I'm trying to go back to the kind of the beginning of when this mess started. And there's really no beginning of it because it goes way, way, way back. Way back to the days of Goldwater and George Wallace. And a real, real big turning point for what I'm talking about was Ronald Reagan. Now, I am not going to come out in, into an anti-GOP stance or an anti-democratic stance. I'm going to show you what I think is happening. And I, I really don't have a lot to say for the GOP. I really think they have harmed this world greatly. Uh, and not to say that I think the Democrats have done such a great job either. So tonight is really not political. Um, I do need to get some other charts on the screen. But but it just so happens that when I was looking for a starting point, I went back to 05, 06. And at that time, I had just met Liza. And I had just written an article for uh, a Pittsburgh newspaper uh, about what's coming because we knew Pluto was coming. We knew Pluto was about to enter uh, the sign of Capricorn in 08. So I wrote about it, its entrance into that sign. Um, and I really got to the point where I said, help. And I asked, uh, I started to find out, becoming friends with, with, with Liza, I started to find out that she's a hell of a writer and researcher also, beside an astrologer of 50 years. So I asked her to help me out, and we together wrote, we sculpted an article, uh, which was very interesting, that um, showed us a lot of what we thought we would be facing, what we thought we would be facing in 08 onward. And Pluto was to be uh, in entering into the sign of Capricorn in January of 08 and until 2023. And now in 2024, it's going back and forth between the sign of Capricorn and going into Aquarius and coming back and forth. And pretty soon it will go into Aquarius and just stay there. And I don't know about you, and I don't know how much study you have done but I have watched this very closely, and it is astounding to me what 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 Pluto has done on his second entrance into Aquarius, which was just a few months ago. It is astounding to me the trouble it has caused with about every other person. And I don't understand this either. 
it seems to be causing devastating results with about just about every other person that I know. I'm just telling you what I find. Now you can go up in your head and think about your family and think about the people you work with and think about the past several months and think about people have gone through devastating changes in the past uh, three months or so. I know I have. Some people I talk to haven't. I'm not going to try to jump to a conclusion. But if we go back to 05 and 06, it just so happens that that's when Harris was discovered. She was discovered, and then I don't know exactly what happened. She was discovered for a second time in 2006. This is about the time that Mr. Trump came to the forefront. Okay? Now, remember... This basis that I'm talking about, about how did we get here, really goes back to the Reagan eras of 1980, and it goes back even before. And you'll notice where we are now. And I don't think I'm being unfair when I talk about where we are now. So I think we got a really big mess on our hands. I did not expect something different. We wrote about this. We wrote about the collapse of so many social institutions starting in 05 and 06 and 07, especially in 08. And what did you see? You saw a collapse in of just about every single institution that there is in the country. And now what you have is a country that barely looks anything like itself. I'm going to give you my tense, two cents. You guys can argue all you want, and we'll discuss it. I invite you to discuss it today. But what we're seeing largely in the Pluto sense is this. And some of this is repetition for you who have been here. Some of this, you need this repetition to get a real firm understanding of what the heavy outer planets can do. Pluto gets upset at mainly one thing. There's several things, but mainly one thing when it comes to institutions. And that is an institution that loses its way. It loses its mission statement. Pluto is a planet that wants you to assert and apply and stick to your mission statement. It's a heavy duty planet. It cares a lot about people. It really does. And it wants you sticking to your guns. And if we see anything now, we see people trying to beg as they drag their little kids across the Rio Grande, trying to find a place that's a home and we don't, we're shutting the doors. So I'm not judging the USA. I'm saying to you, the USA has a very spoiled chart. I'll be glad to show you. It has a chart with not much real strength in it. It's got resources. It's got friends. But it's really drifted far from what's on the side of the Statue of Liberty. And when you do that, what Pluto does, it's hard to say this right, Pluto starts to bring you down. It starts to deconstruct your country, deconstruct your, your entity, your government, your, your philosophy, your institution. Why? Because there's no balls behind it. There's no real character behind it, promise. Bring us your health, bring us your unhealthy, bring us your sick and your poor, and they'll find home and they'll find a respite here uh, in the United States. And we found out that that ain't true. What we found out in the last several years is we are not who we thought we were. And that is very painful. 
that is also augmented by the fact that the Pluto has returned in the United States chart 240 some years later. 240 some years later, Pluto started out about 18 degrees of Capricorn when we were born. And 240 some years later, it's come back to the same spot in the, in the past couple of years. Now, when a Pluto returns, what it does, Pluto is the one planet that says, put it on the table. You don't fool this planet. Put it on the table. <clears throat> Who are you? Who aren't you? But you don't fool this planet. Because one of the planets has to be out there looking through everything with x-ray vision, and that's Pluto. And if you look at what's around you, you look at what your and listen to what your government people are telling you, you look at what your institutions are saying, the United States has no substance right now. There's no substance right now to fight back and to prop up once again that mission statement of what we meant. And it really took a bad hit when we started to see little kids in cages. Now, I'm not here to put the country down. I'm here to talk honestly about what I see. I'll be the first one to put away on top if it deserves it, but it doesn't. Unfortunately, we won World War II. And fortunately, we did we did win it, along with the Russians, of course. And the unfortunate part is we rested on our laurels ever since. We've rested on our laurels ever since. We're the top. Nobody messes with us. I saw a show the other day, talk show like this. And, and the woman, one of the women said, yeah, but we're America. Yeah, but we're America. As if we're special. And we're not special. So how did this come about? <clears throat> well, when Pluto was entering the sign of Capricorn in 2008, January of 08, it had been 15 years or so going through, bouncing along through Sagittarius from 05 to, to, I'm sorry, from 1995, from 1995 until 2008, it was in the, the casual, fun loving sign of Sagittarius. So what did you see at that time? What did you see? shoved in your mailbox all day long in your mailbox was new uh, credit card applications. Let's, let's, let's uh, mortgage everything and remortgage your house. Let's borrow against the future. Don't worry about the future. We're going to be okay. Right? That's what happened. Then I started walking around, driving around in 2007, 2008. That's when the financial uh, Wall Street started collapsing, 07, 08. I started to see who's got these two Winnebago's in their driveway? Who's got these three Cadillacs in their driveway? How are they paying for this stuff? The Sagittarius. It's the downside of Sagittarius. Sag has many good sides, but the downside is, hey, don't worry about it. Hey, don't worry about it. And boy, is that a dangerous energy. And once January hit, it even hit before January 25th of 08. It hit before then. Once January 25th hit in 08, all kind of things started collapsing. Okay. And the reason they collapsed is not because somebody up there wanted us to collapse. It's because we didn't build any foundation. So 
a miracle. We didn't build a strong enough meaningful foundation in it. To me, a meaning found, meaningful foundation means we have to be strong as Americans. We have to be strong with Europe. We have to be strong with South America, etc. We have to be strong with Australia. We got to build strength. And we didn't do it. And what did we do? What did we do? We just took advantage of country after country after country. And there is a marvelous book. What's his name? Jonathan John John Perkins. There's a marvelous book out by a man named a former economist named John Perkins. And it's called the Yeah. Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Recording in progress. Confessions. Confessions. I, I muted you, Renata. Confessions, yeah. of, uh, confessions of an Economic Hitman. And what happened in this book? This guy used to be very pro-economics, used to teach it, and used to work a lot for the great big industries in the United States. And he finally saw the light, and he wrote a book about the confessions of what he had been doing, being sent to South America from the White House, from Washington, D.C., to hit these other countries. And what does that mean? Take advantage of them to get their resources, to get them dependent upon us to end up where they had no choice but to become dependent upon us. Instead of, I mean, I may be cornballish. What I think we should have been doing through those years is making friends with these other countries and helping these other countries and lifting them up while they lifted us up and helping the Australians and then helping the Austrians and all of us helping each other. But instead, no, we followed the BS and I knew we were in trouble when I saw Ronald Reagan's chart. Reagan's chart is full of deception, unintelligence, and he was going to ride that horse off into the sunset like he did in the movies. And the gullible American public was going to swallow it. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. I found out tonight, I didn't know this from Liza, that Mr. Uh, Perkins ended up going to jail. The government got after him. Blah, 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 blah. blah. So anyhow, he's back amongst the living again, but he's uh, certainly an enemy of the state. Okay, so what started me on this track a couple of weeks ago was I looked around and I saw the mess we're in and I started to look and see, well, what are we going to do about it? I didn't see anything. I see marvelous shows like this show. Pat myself on the back. Pat Rick on the back. I think we are a marvelous show. I think we we people here are, have the marvelous intent for spiritual rebirth, loving one another. But I looked around, I saw, where's the strength going to come from? It's not in the USA star. It's just not there. The USA, when it was founded, there were only seven planets, 1776, and the USA powered on Sun, Jupiter, Venus, all together. Oh my God, that's almost like too good to be true. All the good guys put together, all the riches, the land of bright green grass, and all the new resources and all that. Marvelous chart that we put together. But then we found out through the next several hundred years when new planets came along and new planets came along and Uranus came along and Neptune came along and Pluto came along and we placed these planets on the USA's chart. We started to see a country that was not at all like we had originally thought. So you get through the 70s and you get through the 80s 
and we're a very victorious, resourceful United States. And then what had Ray, then uh, um, Obama comes along. What happened that all of a sudden we started closing our gates? Could it be the Fox Network? Sure could be. Sure could be. Now what you've got are all these people are lying to each other, these two major, three major networks that are just lying and it's one team against the other team. And it's just awful. It isn't helping anybody. And we've got an election coming soon where I'm going to sit with 10 pairs of blinders on while that's going on. I mean, I'm scared to death to what to go through another election cycle beside all the other idiotic stuff. So while all that was going on, 95% of the astrologers in the world are ignoring what Eris has done. E-R-I-S is her name. She was discovered amongst another group of planets that are beyond Pluto. That group is considered rather unimportant, except Eris is considered really important. And Eris was discovered 0506. What is Eris about? Now, I've done 10 programs already on the subject of Eris. Eris is about I'm ruthless. I will bring fairness to you no matter what it costs. I will bring fairness and equality to you, no matter what it costs. It might even be some ugly ways of doing it, but you're going to get it. Just not like Pluto, but there's a whole different energy. So Eris in the last 20 years or so is ruthless. She was a uh, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Rick. Uh, she was a goddess, and she was not invited to one of the big parties that Zeus was having in mythology. And she was deeply offended by not being invited. So she created a golden apple, and she carved in it, who of ye is the fairest? And she scratched it through the window of Zeus's party and started all this chaos. So she's known as the goddess of chaos. And she will bring you chaos if that's what she has to use. And I ask you, have you seen any chaos since 2005? I'm not here to make you feel better. I'm here to tell you the truth of what I see. If I saw run to hopeful stuff, I would be announcing it, but that's not what I see. I see a bunch of chaos. I see a bunch of people that will do whatever they got to do to have their way. Now, beside that, we had to start putting errors on the charts of the Republicans, on the charts with the Democrats, on the charts of the United States. And man, did we start seeing some stuff. Mm. You ought to see where it's at in Mr. T -t 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 Trump's chart. It's the boss of his chart. And if he's not ruled by chaos, I don't know what he's ruled by. Now, what is she chaos about? She wants fairness. She doesn't want the Peter principle. She doesn't want somebody moving up in the corporation that doesn't deserve it, that can't handle the job. She will do whatever they have. She has to do to chop their knees off to bring them back down. She wants fairness. She wants people treated equally. She wants people treated included. And see, that's what we started to see, the opposite from the Pluto people and the GOP. We started to see, well, the people with the money got money, and the people with the, without the money, too bad they don't have money. That's what we've been seeing. You got money? Okay. 
they, they believe you worked for it, everybody else is bums. It's not true. It's not true. And then this myth about the Americas for all of us that are created equal. How many black people have you talked to recently? How many black people have you talked to in the past 20 years? About being treated equally. There have been all these efforts. There have been all these wonderful efforts to make things better and things are better in a lot of ways, yes. But what happened is about seven years ago, about six years ago, Pluto and Eris made a right angle to each other. Pluto, Eris was now on the scene at around 24, 25 degrees of Aries and 24, 25 degrees of Capricorn. Eris and Pluto started to square each other. And if you don't think that's a big deal, then you don't know a thing about astrology. And it's only now that we're seeing some astrologers out there are starting to really see the importance of Eris, the importance of when the two together, working with the two together. And when these two are together, do you think they're a calming influence on each other? I don't think so. Pluto is ready. How do I put it? Pluto is ready. If you don't deserve to exist, it will get rid of you. That's what Pluto does. It's one of its jobs. After having given you many warnings, Many warnings. Eris is not so friendly. So when the two were going back and forth, that's what you were seeing when uh, COVID hit. That's what you were seeing the couple of years before COVID, when everything started falling apart, people started running and hiding and, and, and saying, where are we going to get this power from? Where are we going to get this power from? Our dreams? Our, our laurels from the 1950s? So it's lucky that right now, Pluto and Eris are starting to separate a little bit. And they're going to come back together one more time. And you're going to feel it here real soon, probably around the election time. Then they're going to start separating again because Eris moves very slowly. Eris is 550 years to go around the circle. Pluto is 250. So, where, where does the power come from? Does it come from a rising Japan, a rising China, a rising Korea, a rising Soviets, a rising Israel? Where does it come from? It's got to come from the basic heart of America. You go anywhere in the world and they'll tell you that they re rely on the basic heart of America. I want to tell you this. And then what do you see on TV, on the commercials, and what do you see these off-the-wall senators screaming about, and what do you see in this news? So this is where it's come from. It's come from what Liza was telling me about today, uh, earlier. Um, in the old days, we just assumed. Like, when one of the things that's happened, and this is beautiful, one of the things that's happened to us is we assumed in 1776 that when we were writing that Declaration of Independence, that everybody else was going to be somewhat reasonable. We were all going to kind of get along, had the best interest of each other at heart. What have we seen since? Every possible loophole that you could find out has got a chisel in it. Somebody's banging on everything. What do you mean the president can't be accused of something? Well, now we got to go rewrite everything. So that's where I say to you, where does the 
the goodness come from? Where does that engine come from? Where does the motor come from? And let me stop there for a little bit, because we can always go back to many other factors. But that you see how that coincides with the loss of our mission statement. <clears throat> Where has our mission statement gone? It's gone underground because we could put it underground and nobody would see us do it. What did we see in the GOP's chart for years and years and years was a Neptune conjunction, a Neptune return. Neptune was starting to return. It's 2018. Neptune return. And what happened after 2018 is they have evaporated. There is nobody left. There is no GOP anymore. Now, you can fake it. Fake it till you make it. That's what Neptune's downside is. Lie, cheat, steal. Then what happened about a year later? We had a Uranus return. In the same chart, we had a Uranus return on 84s, every 84. Return happened in the same GOP chart. So you just had the Neptune dissolve the entire GOP like the Wicked Witch. And now came along a Uranus return. Uranus return is, let's come, let's bring things to life. Let's try something new. Let's help out the unfortunate. Let's get going. Let's go, let's go manufacture something brand new. Let's get started. Let's get rebirth, reborn. Well, how are you going to reborn when you're based in a mud puddle? How can you have a mud puddle, which is the wicked witch has dissolved, and how can you come about and find any solid ground with which to launch a year in its return? So that's where you're getting all the off-the-wall stuff. That's Uranus's downside. You're getting all the off-the-wall crazy stuff. Okay? Like what came about during, um, you know, you don't want a vaccine. You don't want a vaccine. What do you want a vaccine for? All the off-the-wall crazy stuff was the Uranus trying to do something and is still trying to convince the naive American public that it's real, that it really has America's heart at interest, that it really is there for the American values of apple pie and all that. It's not. There's nothing there. Now, um, she may have to go, whatever you, whatever you think. Um, tell me if I'm wrong, everybody. What do you see? What do you see? What do you not see? What is Rick not seeing? The microphone. I'm just going to throw something out there that I just saw with you speaking. My yeah. eyes got really big as saucers. It's the first time I thought of our English language as you were saying something. Of course the myths were not written in English but the English language does do something and it would be interesting to see what the words are in Greek. When you say the question that was on the apple was who's the fairest? The story proceeds that through three goddesses they were thinking about the most beautiful. And the idea of fairest could be just, equal, two different concepts entirely. Beautiful, yeah. Now look at the American's chart. Without the outer planets, very simple, very naive, very childlike. Be beautiful, strong. Yes, yeah. but with that virility of youth is a lot of need for wisdom. 
And I'm thinking they didn't have the maturity. You bring Uranus along and then Neptune and Pluto, you're talking about, about a lot of shadow stuff that brings substance. And if you just run off in your youth doing what you think you need to do, you haven't developed substance yet. That's right. That's right, Rick. That's my first thoughts to go ahead and look at how is this built in light of the fairest? I don't well, think I, li I like what you said. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I was struck one day. This reminds me. I was just, I was just flabbergasted. One day I was looking for certain keywords in Google for an article I was writing. And I put into Google the word beauty. And I dare you all to do it. Because you'll get 75,000 pages in a row of beautiful women. It's not what I asked for. Show me beauty. So you see the Madison Avenue and, and the people with the products and you see all the, the women that are very good looking and they're still piling stuff on their face and they, they already were good looking before it started and you see the money, 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 money. So, you know, Liza and I have driven each other crazy and sick talking about this because, you know, it's going to eventually come down to those people with the big money are going to have to start sharing that money with the little people. And it's just not going to happen. Or how? how how's it going to happen? Tell, tell us, um, Miss Jane. I like to pick on people uh, from your from your country. Tell us how people in your country see America. Well, I think what you're saying is how we see it too. Sometimes it's. Uh, like I saw some, something on the news this morning and an American was being interviewed and and the people that were interviewing was say, him were saying, you know, what do you do you like coming to Australia? And they and the guy said, I love it because I he said I really do even though America is his home. He said, but I come here and not that we're any, you know, not we're not perfect, but but there's a different, a totally different energy. Right. here um and he just you know loves i suppose i see australians as people going oh like us come on we're a long way away come on when you come here and do you like us make sure you know, so we sort of in when, when they come we sort of want them to love us if you know what i mean of course uh, but when we look at america it, it, it's hard i think all of us find it so hard because i look at all of you and i think you know you're beautiful humans yeah. here and there's a lot of beautiful humans yeah. in America. Yeah. It's 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 like the loudness of the this I want to call it a minority. I think it is of, of this really dark energy over there. And a lot I want to add in there and looking at when social media started too, Rick. That's right. Cuz it was That's wasn't it time. around yeah. 07 yeah. Oh wait. That's right. Because I'm and and so there's 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 ways of getting beautiful stuff out on it, but there's also ways of just spreading. Yeah, tell me about what that's, that's interesting to me. Tell me about what you were saying to to quote a phrase that you guys see Americans as loud. Well, yeah, I suppose we we do. There's a there's a loud voice. I say loud as in People like Trump. You said a minority. Also, you said a minority is loud. It, it, do, do you? I feel like it's a minority, but do you feel like it's a minority? I do. I feel like there is a large voice for a small group of people looking to manipulate the masses. Yes. Rick, do you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Because it happens yeah. here. It does happen yeah. here. It's there's a, a the the right here of uh, going very far right, and um, the left 
uh, sort of, and they're, you know, the Prime Minister is in the in what's called the Labor Party and they're more left, but they're becoming, sometimes I feel like there's not much of a difference between the two at the moment, just at certain things. And, and again, there's this sense that the haves are so far away from what's real on the ground. Yeah. That it's like I, we're all switching off. We're all just switching off from, I mean, maybe we're not all, but but I feel like we're switching off from politicians and going, well, tell the, us something. The thing is, too, that with America, and I've played a lot of euchre online uh, with Australians and gotten to know many of them, we all want the same thing. We all yeah. want the same thing. Have enough money to spend a little, get a house, comfortable, some food on the table, the kids are happy and healthy. You can get to a doctor. We don't want these outrageous things, except this few, exactly. the one with the one with 51 yachts. And, what, 51 and what's the point? Huh? And what's the point of that? It's so and crazy. you know, you know, I know, everybody knows it ain't gonna get us anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get us yeah. anywhere. Absolutely. Okay. We're getting to the nowhere faster and faster. And you look around. Yeah. I look around this show and I look around America and I see so many fabulous people. Just really cool, nice, friendly, big-hearted people. But yes. I ask you, you know, of, the, of these institutions that we watched crash and burn in 08, what's left? Are the schools going to help us? The churches aren't going to help us. Are the, is the government going to help us out? Are they mm -hmm. going to give us a bunch of money to, to back it all instead of trying to cut Social Security and cut this and cut this and cut that? Is, is athletics? Oh, holy athletics. That's what's been replaced in this country. It's like we don't care about anything except our team. Super yeah. Bowl. NBA championship. So I ask you, where does it come from? Does it come from the Antichrist? Does it come from somewhere in Europe? What do you folks in Illinois think? Come on. That's the problem with this show is you get put on the spot. Well, I have to say something. My acupuncturist, when I asked him, is Biden going to be able to take office? Because I was following the whole coup and I knew it was going to happen ahead of time. Um, he said Biden will take office, but Trump will be reelected. There's a real good chance of that astrologically. And I ask you, what kind of brain would reelect this man? Well, well, I will say is I have this conversation with like everybody because I'm curious to know who they support. And they're always like, well, I don't exactly support Trump, but I don't like Biden. And I'm like, I understand that. I'm like, but it's the lesser of two evils. So I don't know <laughs> what they're doing. They're either not voting or they secretly want like chaos. Well, you like, see, there, there's where we, there's where we need to insert Harris, and I've done this before. The negative side of Harris, the negative side of Harris, is I don't care what you've done, we're going to bring a stop to it. We're going to do it any way we can. We're going to drain the GD swamp any way that we have to, and I don't care. What do you say? He's draining the swamp, even though he isn't. He's draining the swamp, even though he isn't. It's self-deluding. It's self-delusion. And I don't, I'm not the greatest fan of Mr. Biden, although he's done some rather healthy things. He's sane. Um, the problem yeah. here is, like, even the teachers that I teach with vote for Trump. And I ask them, what, You're how is that me. No, I'm like, you're unionized. Do you know he's going to get rid of every single union in the United States if he How can? can you, you see, that's the unreasonableness of, of Harris. 
So and maybe I will create the biggest chaos storm you've ever seen if I have to. Well, okay. I don't want guns in my grade schools. Yeah, Eliza is is going to insert something here. Something very briefly. The presidential election is more than just a contest between Excuse me. Can Eliza get closer to the computer yeah, so we can hear her better? Yeah, we need we need to hear. Her. Hold on one moment. I'm going to be very brief. <laughs> you just say all you got to say. All I want to say is brief. The presidential election is is much more. There's much more at stake than just elect. You know, uh, something between Trump and Biden. It is really um, very much our, our democracy is at stake. Depending on who we vote for, it's going to be uh, going very quickly toward a fascist state or preserving our democracy. That's and, it. That's beautifully said. Thank you. Rick, I think it's right down the alley uh, uh, of what she was, uh, uh, what she was saying, Loretta. Um, you're, uh, it's just unbelievable how you can sit there and go to work with other teachers that feel that way. I mean, I don't know what you do with your own brain. It's astounding, and I don't think Biden's the greatest. Yeah, the presidential election is important for so many things. Look at what, if you took all the presidential legal things that were done and set them aside on both sides, right. look at the effect the Supreme Court being changed by the president has changed women's health care in our nation. Well, you, like I said, I look at the chart. You're an expert, too. Look at the NATO chart. What's going to turn it around? I don't see it. It's not there. It's not there. There are some well-meaning aspects. Jupiter at the top. There's some, some futuristic Uranus things. But... The, these dudes that went over and carved their little tunnels in the side of New Zealand, they know what they're doing. I'm going in my tunnel. I'm hiding my money. I'm taking my money with it. So, what do you say to your friends at work, uh, Loretta? What do you say to them when you're talking to these sanest of sane people, the teachers? I mean, I try to convince people otherwise, but they always have like a potpourri of reasons. And I have heard the one, I just want it shook up. And that was like one of my favorite people at work. He's like, I just want to see things shook up. And I'm like, your wife is unionized in the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. You're a unionized teacher. What are you voting for? That is the problem with heiress. Heiress is to shake it up just to shake it up. But you don't want that. You don't want the babies born with their eyes going. Rrr, rrr. You don't want that. There's got to be a, a sane middle ground somewhere. And this idiot, he knows how to just not talk. He knows how to not talk and people will put the words in his mouth. Who? I, I read today what he was said about religion. I mean, it was like, Embarrassment, what he was saying. What's happening in was in Milwaukee, Deborah? What's happening in your the great state of Milwaukee? When this topic comes up, you are you are muted, dear. <clears throat> yes. Well, um we are gear gearing up to host the Republican National Convention <laughs> next Republican. month. Republican. Oh man. Lucky us. You know, we had the Democratic Convention, but COVID prevented yeah. it from happening. So, so um, I don't know, but I would like to offer just another um, like 50,000 foot view. When I have conversations with people about where we're going, 
Um, I look at the main leaders, uh, Trump, I, I hate calling him a leader because he's a leader of crap, but anyway, Biden, Putin, Netanyahu, right. and then you can, you can go down the line. If that isn't a Molotov cocktail ready to really shake things up, I mean, things may get more sh shook up, shaken up, uh, just by um, a, what will ultimately be a sudden changing of the guard. And, uh, and we may be without leaders for a while. And then there's going to be a settling process. So uh, it that doesn't give me comfort about how people will vote for Trump or why people would vote for him. Um, but I understand that you know, if they don't feel real good about voting for Biden, but then I think maybe it won't matter. Maybe, maybe these, these guys are at the G7 right now. What if, you know, I mean, anything can happen between now and the election. What do you, what do you mean? Um... Um, I've heard other, well, I don't know. They're just, they're, they've, they're all past their expiration date. And yeah, well, what, what do you um, mean? Maybe it won't matter. I've Well, the ele the election because there may be there may not be a definitive election in November. Yeah, that's true. We may not have. That's true. That's true. Yeah, we may not have. A that's true. A decision. Yeah. Who do you think is going to jump on that? Who do you think is going to jump on that? What? Who do you think is going to jump on that fact? The right wing, the fascists. They're yeah, going to jump on it and know. blame the left. For, blame the left for causing it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you're asking. Otherwise, you're asking the wrong person because I I can't. I have a hard time looking at it through that lens of Eris and Pluto and and every other planet. Uh, right now, I look at those those guys, those white hair guys, white males. They're all asses and they're, you know, except for Biden. Biden is the exception. Um, but this is the definition. Oh, uh, Zelensky. This is the definition of what Eris does. Yes. When her negative side is activated. Her positive side is, yes, we use chaos within reason. Within reason. The negative side doesn't care. Just, just blow it up. And I understand why people feel that way. Just blow it up. But they're not looking at what, what could be behind it. What's after this? It's scary. Especially when you live in southwestern Pennsylvania. There are a lot of deer hunters here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Erica. We're not letting you off. Thank well, you, Deborah. I'm pretty much a lifelong Democrat. I was an independent for a while, but then I decided the heck with that. I went back to being progressive and a Democrat. And I live in California and I live in San Francisco. And I get really upset with people who say that Biden and Trump are just about the same. I think Biden is basically a really good man. I yeah. think he's done a lot for our country. Right. I think he's proven it. He's nothing like him at all. And I don't even see how progressives and other Democrats can say, well, they're about the same. They're both old men and all this stuff. I don't believe that one bit. I think he has a soul, and I think Donald Trump has no soul. He sold his soul. Oh, I, do, I agree with that. And I think that the rot started to come into our country right from the beginning because everybody took a look and they said, oh, the gold rush, oh, a new place where we can make money, and all the rotten people from, you know, the oligarchs and people from all over the world came and they sunk their hooks, you know, as much as they could into this country. 
and the industrialists, you know, they took advantage of the people, they took advantage of the black people, of the slaves, they came for the, you know, people went from the cities on the trains and they just shot Buffalo for the fun of it and just left the rotten carcasses. Mary, Mary, you know, human beings are can be pretty damn despicable and stupid. That's what I think. And I'm just I read I read a moment. people who don't think and don't feel yeah. for you know all of humanity and there are good people all over the world. And if we could just unite the people that have common sense and care there, the for the problem. planet and for each other and get our leaders, kick them in the butt, you know. <laughs> and get them to do what needs to be done because this planet needs to be saved. Look what's now, going on the planet. According, according, to, according to who? According to science. I also believe in why, science. Why does this planet need to be saved? Well, I mean, according I suppose... To well, let the it, kids it would and be, the grandkids... It would be, it would be nice. Up, right? It the, would be you know, nice. It would be nice if they got to have the a nice kind of life like we grew up in. Yeah, well, I think look at all the now. stuff that they don't There's have. There's a book out called The Dark and Bloody River. It's a fabulous book about how the higher river was was uh, settled and what came about as they started to move from the east to the west. The American, the American settlers wiped out the Indian 17 miles per year. Per year, they wiped out 17, a swath of 17 miles of Indians, then 17 miles, then 17 miles. And that's how it happened. And and um, Tecumseh tried to warn them. He said, that's what these people are, are going to do. They're going to come and take your, your babies and your teepees and your your tribe, and they're going to wipe you out. And the, and the other the other Indians, the Creeks and those. They said, ah, no, we're good friends. We trade with them. That won't happen. So all, the, all of a sudden, they're all shoved into Oklahoma. Okay, we got uh, very good. We uh, got a lot out of Erica there. That was good. Kathy, your feelings about all of this? Well, I know the presidential election is, is really big and really important. But, you know, there's elections at the local level, and I think that has a big influence on what happens locally and feeds into the federal government. So I feel like there's attention needs to be paid on that level and not just on the federal level, which, of course, the federal level is getting all the attention, the presidential elections. But we've got a big fight going on here in Oklahoma before Tom Cole and his seat. And uh, it's getting kind of uh, brutal, the messages on TV and stuff. So, you know, at the local level, it's, it's I think, just as important as, as the larger elections. So I tend to focus on that because it's more easy to get information than it is on the national elections. You don't always hear, you hear the ads. You don't always yeah, hear the Yeah, that's, that's true. For well, yeah, Eliza, you need to. Uh, come over if you want to speak, Penny. Liza has something else to add. I just wanted to emphasize what the last person was saying about the importance of um, local elections and being involved in um, local uh, politics and other activities, because um, uh, when we, we act together as a community, we are are actually living and we and we act as a democracy on a community level we're actually uh, acting the way we should be as a, on a state level on a national level and it's very empowering for all of us to become involved and to see that we can really make a difference True. i'd like to go ahead and chime in with this local level area too yeah. if things are going to fall apart because of the trajectory of all the mess this is before it gets put back together. It's our local level that has new blood coming up, thinking that is possibly outside the box. It's where we're going to put less 
likely to be corrupt individuals in higher offices will come from these local elections. And also potentially more brilliance may come from there as well if they were given a chance because they're going to be some younger ones. And that is really something we desperately are in need of because they're going to have a real task to tackle the mess that has had two centuries to devolve. So there's a lot of work ahead when we look at if this has all been created by some big mistakes. Uh, I'm I'm saying look at the senselessness that we've created. It wasn't overnight. It, it, it's it, exactly what Erica said. This yeah. has been, been there since the very beginning. Right. The slave owners, the cotton field owners, they knew how to keep people down, keep themselves up, have their mansions and all. And you know the thing the thing is that I keep hearing people keep talking about what happens when we rebound. How do you know it's gonna happen? How yeah, do you, look, you know? How do you know it's gonna happen? Go ahead, Rick. If you look at history from Britain, the Magna Carta preceded our revolution by hundreds of years. And that was this idea that put the power in the aristocracy so it wasn't just about the monarchy it was as though we were rebelling about the monarchy but really it was the power brokers that were the enemy not one head not one system it was this idea that money wealth power is going to rule as opposed to this aquarian utopian idea that the founding fathers were at some level seeking to, to elevate. It's a beautiful image. And I think we can try and make it a reality, but only when we recognize the false images that we have neglected to eradicate, because there are some misunderstandings uh, about pretense and it leaves the opportunities to hide corruption. That needs corrected somehow. Well, Einstein pointed out in his opinion that the number one problem we would have would be fighting the media. Fighting the false media. I think he's... In and that's in being controlled by just a few small companies and people. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's a scary, it's a scary situation. And uh, you, you and I both know Oftentimes, when Pluto devastates something, the rebuilding does happen, and it happens right. quite nicely, and it happens correctly, and people do learn from it. You go to modern-day Germany, and you can see that, and how they teach their young kids. But um, I think the solution is going to be in the people, not, and that's globally. I think with Pluto trying to bring the Aquarian views if the entire planet raises its consciousness to say, it's time we get our heads in the game, the Aquarian ideals, and everybody step forward. Make our voices count, make our votes count. Yeah. I'll yield to Jane. Yeah, Jane. Oh, sorry, Rick. I just wanted to add, too, I just feel like that's that's just all happening underneath like I say underneath but example for our last elections there was um, a huge vote for independence so that the two bigger parties are getting smaller and that and therefore the you know we've got a, a senate and you know and it's and so that's really interesting because they're actually using using social media, those independents, and they're mostly all women, which is incredible. Of course. Um, of course. And so, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. and just that, so that's all been happening in this last election. So it'll be interesting. I think we'll have an election possibly by the end of the year. 
Uh, but also just looking at, because I'm a local government councillor and I got voted in first time just in 2020 and it, and I won't run again, but I've, and it, the elections are October this year uh, and I've got two Trumps out of seven in the council, but there's only the two. And therefore, and even though we're a bunch of oldish white people, and I'm the only woman, um, <laughs> even though it's a nightmare with those two men, there's still this sense that we've got these beautiful humans that have got common sense, that have got a positive way of looking at life, and it's just these two that are just angry, attacky, nothing is good enough, all that sort of stuff, and fake news, lots of fake news. But I suppose what I'm saying is in watching even local government elections, there's way more women running and they're younger. It's usually been retirees that are in council. Yeah. But it's now you can just see this groundswell. And even though a lot of women in this term in local government have resigned um, because of bullying and awful stuff, there's still this incredible feeling of get. there's a lot more support that's happening because of funding and whatever else and women getting together. I mean, like I've got a WhatsApp group that's a bunch of female councillors that just support each other. It's, it, anyway, but I just wanted to add that there's, there's it's that if knowing that there's this groundswell under there and we don't know, it's a bit like I think you said, Deb, Deborah, that, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen in the States because, yeah, I just feel like there's stuff happening we, we don't even see at the moment. Positive, I mean. Very, very good. Anyway, I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> thank, thank you, Jane. That's encouraging. Uh, we need to hear from the woman who just came out of the darkness, which is Susan. She's now in the light. Yeah, I I don't even know what to say. This is not a simple matter. No, it's, just, it's not. There's so much misinformation out there. It's 99% misinformation on all sides. And I, I there is no easy answer to any of this. I I think we're screwed. I agree. And and I just I mean it's not like I have any ideas for how what's going to save us either. I I I hope we get through this. That's all. I I agree. I, with, I there agree was with a you. time I used to laugh. There was a time back when I was in my thirties and forties, and the question would come up: uh, What disease kills people in your family? You know, do most people die of cancer in your family, heart disease, something else? And my answer was always, most people in my family died of Nazis. I think I'm safe. I don't think I'm safe anymore. Yeah, the my people, the people here, the people here don't country. know. The people here don't know your family's history. My my family was pretty much wiped out in the Holocaust. My father got out. He was the only survivor in his immediate family. My mother and her brother and her father got out. She lost her mother. Um, and, and it has pretty much shaped my experience of the latter half of the 20th century. And um, I, I see this as going south real fast. I think as we get closer to November, Violent insurrection is going to become a commonplace thing. And I don't think anybody is safe. I really don't. He's already said what he's going to do when he gets back into office. He is all about retribution. There's nothing peaceful or bringing the country together or in support of the legal system coming out of that guy, ever. Everything is about destruction. You know, I mean... You used to be able to laugh. These guys are all like the kid who kicks over the sandcastle, destruction for its own sake. We're beyond that. We're beyond that. We have neo-fascism happening here. And I don't think it's going to be too long before they adopt the label 
too. And they'll do it with a big laugh at first, you know, till everybody gets used to hearing it. That's right. Really, that's frightening stuff. I, this is dark stuff. It just is. And I don't see any way around this happening. Um, and if people can't see the difference between Donald Trump refusing to accept the election system or the legal system or anything else, he wins if he says he wins and he says he wins. And that's all there is to it. And he's supported in this. And contrast this with Joe Biden. He's not controlling the justice system to get Trump. Ask his son Hunter how well that's working out. Biden's not controlling the justice system plainly, but his response to his own son being found guilty was, we support our kid, we will work together as a family, we'll get through this, but we support the rule of law. Well, you hear anything like that coming out of Trump? Never. I, there isn't any hope anymore. Well, that's, that's how it seems. And one of the things that we have to do, like Einstein said, we've got to get a definition of who's out there, who's out there, instead of dreaming, nightmaring, who's there, who's them, making everybody into a them. And it's all being... based on fake information. It's propaganda yeah, gone wild. Right. And that's where it's got to be healed. That's where it's got to be healed. And you're right, it's got to start at the bottom. With if I might healthy healing, go ahead, Rick. I'd like to share one piece of hope about what Susan just said. To say what was said from President Biden in response to his son, it was a very presidential, statesmanlike thing to say. And I don't remember one thing Trump has ever said Nothing. at all that sounded like a statesman nothing. or a presidential. Zero. It's always nothing zero. as a leader that is seeking to make a change. That's uniform behavior. Go back to the pandemic. His response to that was there is no pandemic. What pandemic? And it moved to can't we inject bleach and everybody will fix this problem? And Biden comes along and launches the uh, vaccination program. And hey, we're no longer wearing masks. I, I mean, you know, Trump did his best to screw up the economy. And inflation has already fallen by two thirds. And we'll get the rest of the way there by the end of the year. I, I mean, it's taken a lot to fix the damage. And it's been a superhuman effort, and it's been happening. But with misinformation, people who listen to Fox News aren't getting any information. That's right. Propaganda only. And 47% of the population is taking that as gospel. Well, you're exactly right, Susan. I did teach history for a living. <laughs> Well, you thought it right. I don't know anything. You know, you're, you're talking right down the track. I mean, it's it's really accurate. Anybody, uh, before we sign off, anybody else have anything to say? I don't know how you can top what uh, Susan said, because it was excellent. I have something to share. Erica and okay. Renate, the problem is we can't see you, Renate. Uh, I'm sitting in the garden and not very presentable, but let okay. me see. Okay. Oh. There's Renate. There we go. Go ahead, dear. Uh, hi. I said I, I have never been into politics, not in none, but uh, I would go what Jane said at the beginning and Rick. There are so many beautiful, beautiful people I, the Americans and here in Canada, what I meet, and especially the new, the young people, they are, they are just so different, you know. And I think that's the hope: is this young people, and uh, well, everybody makes fun of of Trump, uh, but you know, I, I, 
mostly with people we are all on a way on a spiritual path and i think the hope is there and it's coming from not from loud screaming and all the bad things but it's very quietly coming that's my my hope to be honest the same here in canada because it looks awful when when you see it what the media said and so but there are this other movement i would call it and i hope for that well we're not there it's really nice and that, that's very hopeful message that uh, is a very good thing to end on i think um the hope is with the oh, youth. Rick, i wanted to share something yeah i know i know i'm coming your way dear oh okay you go you go ahead we don't want to cut you off so um you know, as upset as we all are, you know, because we're experiencing this personally in our lifetime, when you do look at history, there have been things like this that have happened in this country before, where people tried to take over where there were priests that were you know, promoting propaganda on the radio and people were eating out of their hand. He was like one of the biggest preachers on the radio. There was um, a um, epidemiologist that came to San Francisco when the plague started showing up and they were blaming it on the Chinese and all this sort of thing. And I mean, the plague was going to spread all over the place. And he just had a little bit of a, um, you know, he wasn't very kind of touchy-feely with the people. And he kept in his office and he didn't go in the communities and he was rejected. But then he laid the groundwork for the next guy who came in. And he was more in touch with the community and they found out that it was the fleas that were on the rats that were biting the people that was causing the plague. And this helped people in, in Europe and in other places too discover like what the source was of it. So we've gone through this and people, you know, have, you know, they've gone, you, we could just see how easily people just fall for all this stuff and, you know, right away, it's like, hang them high, you know, like, let's get that rope and take over. You know, they just, they, I don't know what the hell is the matter with them. They get drunk and then they go out and they think that they're going to handle everything in five minutes. Meanwhile, the rest of the time, they're not doing, you know what. And, I, you know, that's the 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 worst side of our of our of humanity of per, of our personalities and when people try to bring out their better side you know where they strive to help each other and to think better of one another then they can change but we have that dark side and light side within us so hopefully you know, we can reach out to these people who just are so angry and just want to go smash everything and say, why? What happened to you? You know what I mean? Victim. Do it over dinner. Victim. Do it over dinner. People, people don't fight with each other. <laughs> don't get into fisticuffs when they're sitting around a table having a meal. We need to really talk to each other. And I think the pandemic... And being, you know, on social media has made people lazy and or be afraid to begin with, to be around other people. But, you know, as we come back around the campfire, maybe we can work it out and uh, never give up hope. Never give up. That's my motto. Mm -hmm. You could be depressed for a while and then, you know, dust yourself off and the, tomorrow's another day. So, and I don't believe any of the polls either. I think polls are BS. I never answer any of them. So.
So when I hear Agreed. the polls are 47% this and that, it's like- We should oh, vote er Erica, for, vote. Erica for president. I've been working at the, at the you know, elect, during the elections for over 20 something years, ever since the hanging chads in Florida, I want to go see what happens during elections. And I think I'm gonna take time off from my job to work as a clerk this year too. Although I should be in another state, not in California, because <laughs> nobody's going to try and come and shoot me here. <laughs> Everybody, what can I say? It started out peaceful. <laughs> we 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 started out with that where where we started from. I have one suggestion. Yeah, Deborah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'd like to make one suggestion. If you need to get um, reinvigorated and re-inspired, go to YouTube and look up uh, Patty Smith singing "The People Have the Power." It's such a beautiful anthem. It's so good, and uh, every time your spirits are down, pop it up and play. I'll go do that now. And by the way, in two thousand and five, you brought. You started with 2005 and 2000. The first YouTube video ever was in 2005. And that launched, you know, a form of media that we, you know, we deal with now. But at least you can find Patti Smith there and, and, and listen to that song. <laughs> Thank you very much, Deborah and everybody. Love you all. Thank you, Rick, for letting yeah. us all. Loretta, Loretta, you come back. Thank you. <laughs> if you can handle us, you hey, come everybody. back. Because we'll be here. Good night, right. everybody. Oh, Bye. By, the, by the way, if you're not aware of this, this, this will be on this will be on YouTube the next couple of hours under Rick D. Clemente's page. Anyway, type in Rick D. Clemente um, Astrology Unplugged, and you'll see this is episode 380, because they're on each week. So uh, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, YouTubers. We'll see you next week. Thank See you. Ya. Bye, everyone. Take care, all. Many blessings.